Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. You are most welcome and I am hopefully in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. <laughs> you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. This is the latest pick a collab. Good lord, how many have we done now? And I am collabing with the beautiful Nona from hashtag my so good life 1977. So you want to find out exactly what picture Miss Nona chose, which palette or palettes I use to create this look, and of course what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. You have the best seat in the house. Sammy the Sloth Straw is here to confirm. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Uh, ignore the little visitor we have on top of my lip today. He, uh, he arrived overnight without permission. Um, it's been a while since I filmed. So please excuse me if I'm slightly more vague than usual. But I will have told you in the intro that this is a collab with the beautiful Nona. We haven't done a pick collab for a while, so we thought it was time. I shot her a load of photos over and she chose this glorious picture of uh, tulips in a bluebell field. Um, not quite sure what the vibrant orangey reddy flowers are behind between the tulips and the bluebells but I recognize tulips and I recognize bluebells so I am yet to use my Mitchell's head in the cloud palette on screen but it's got yellows and orangey reds and ready brown of the flowers in between the tulips and the bluebells and a blue belly colour and uh, you know, this, this could possibly pass as the green stems if I wanted to do a green shimmer or uh, the, the shadowy parts of the bluebells would kind of be this sort of colour or I've got an orange and a yellow so I pretty much got and some of the tulips have got white bits in, so I could even go for a nice bright white lid. Um, so I haven't quite decided exactly how I'm going to be doing my look today, but then sometimes that works out better for me. Um, regular viewers will know that I usually just... I kind of wing it, if I'm honest. Um... <laughs> I just, I sit here, I look at the inspiration photo um, and I look at the palette and just dip into whatever calls me first. Sometimes this can produce beautiful things, other times not so much. So, we will see what today's efforts produce. Um, this does of course remain a teaching channel. By virtue of that I zoom in really close, so it's just my eyes on screen. This does mean that when I'm looking down to clean the brush or add more pigment you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak. But to me that's a small payoff to actually being able to see what's going on, especially if your eyesight's not great and you're only watching me on a mobile. I'm also going to talk through the differences between hooded and deep set eyes because 
although makeup wears very similarly on both types or each type of eye the actual method of application in order to get the best initial look and the most longevity from it are slightly different um, I'll do oh, sorry hay fever if you see me do this it's hay fever I haven't got a cold and I haven't been snorting anything I shouldn't have been I did dust the mantelpiece this morning. So it could be dust, but it's more likely hay fever. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to insert the clip where I talk you through the difference between the two eye shapes or eye types. That will be very up close and personal, just my eyes on screen, so you can see what I'm talking about. Once that's done, I'll be back to chuck some pigment onto my eyeballs. Not my eyeballs, my eyelids. Chucking it onto my eyeballs would be ridiculous. Um, as this is a teaching channel, when I'm applying the makeup, I normally don't talk about the person I'm collabing with, i.e. the beautiful Nona. I normally save that for the end, for the outro, when I can really concentrate on what I'm saying about her and properly let you know more about her and her channel so here's your clip i'll see you at the other end of it now um my eyes have this primer on it this is the crime pebble primer in blank page cotton i do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated i don't earn money from it but if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. 
and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Hello. Right, I'm going to start off with a small tapered blending brush. This is a Voldemort 506, or M506 if you were wondering. And... Ooh, do you know what, initially I am really drawn by those tulips. That yellow and the orange, just with a hint of almost sort of magenta -y pink in that orange. So, I'm going to start off by going into, oh god, this is the problem with this bloody palette, it's printed everything in silver and against, when it's against the white or this blue, it's bloody difficult to read. Uh, Ufho, U-F-H-O-E. Does that mean something? You effing ho maybe? Oh I don't know. But I'm going into that yellow anyway. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? Hope it has. Right, as always, holding the brush right at the end. If the handle's long enough, stabilise it against the palm of your hand so you get less wiggling at this end. And we are going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, flecker when we get there, reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this, rather than the windscreen wiper, is because I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers that have always been slim that have the same issue. But by doing it like this, rather than the windshield wiper, you're pulling your lid about less and you're less likely to get that folding over of the eye which gives you the, the telltale white stripes. Okay? I'm going to start sort of halfway between my natural crease and my brow. I always start on the outside edge because if you do deposit too much, it's much easier to sort it out when you haven't got your nose in the way. I'm just going to gently build this colour up. Did you see the fallout that came off there where I didn't tap off? Yeah. I'd forgotten how powdery Mitchell's shadows are because it's been a while since I've used either of his palettes. To be honest, it's been a while since I've used any palettes. Um, I had about three weeks where I've not been able to film because of pain. Um, and of course the problem then is that my anxiety kicks in and I'm like, well, they haven't really missed me for three weeks, what's the point, should I really continue? And then I'll get a comment on one of my films or a message in my inbox from on Instagram or Twitter from people that have missed me. And it's just so sweet. The reason I do the same colour both sides first rather than doing one eye and then the other is because although I know obviously what shapes to do on my eyes because I've been putting makeup on them for a fair number of years now um, there are times when my fibro causes random puffiness um, I have days when I just can't get my rings on or off because my hands have randomly swollen um, 
you can see there look how puffy that bit is yeah that's 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 fibrous swelling and I can get that randomly on my face as well and if that's the case I always like to sit back and just relax my brows and just check that the shapes I've got going both sides are the same because if there is some random swelling and it's a changing how one shape looks you're not necessarily going to be able to pick that up once you've put all of the colours on so that's why it's best to do each colour plus then if you're working from lightest to deepest and you're using the same brush but cleaning it off each time you don't have as much worry about oh what if I've got a little bit of dark left on that brush I'm going to go into Banana Skies, which is actually a more pastel, more of a lemon than a bright yellow. And I'm just going to run that just across the tops to just soften and brighten that edge a little bit. So we get a nice gradient of the yellow and it's a little bit less harsh then. When I'm blending two colours together I always go half on the colour, half on the skin. To get a really good blend. I like that. Right, same brush. I'm going to go into m -m 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 marmalade, which is a beautiful, vibrant orange to pick up on the the unknown flowers. And I'm going to put that just slightly below. And again, starting off, blending against the bright yellow. Yeah, I hope your day's been a good one. If it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow's is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, with your brekkie. I hope it's as absolutely fabulous as you are, darling. Yeah, it's been a while since I've filmed. Um, I've actually been struggling more with cellulitis than anything else. Um, there's a, if you've never had cellulitis you have no idea the pain. Basically all your nerve endings are on fire. It's probably the best way to describe it. Um, suffice to say bloody painful and um, I've got a couple of areas that are actually that's where the skin's actually broken and they are being particularly stubborn about healing up um, thankfully I'm not diabetic so it's not that that's causing me the delay in, in healing, it's, it's because I have Raynaud's disease, which is the when my fingers and my toes get super, super, super cold because of bad circulation. Um, even in the midst of summer when Sophie used to do my nails. Speaking of which, look, these are actually my nails. What the hell's going on? My nails never grow like that. Anyway, um... You know, Sophie used to comment even in the middle of summer how cold my fingertips would be. Um, and obviously the lack of circulation, blood circulation, 
it's the uh, nutrients in your in your blood, your white blood cells, and everything that help mend you when you're broken. So that's why it's taking so long for my legs to heal up. Doesn't help, of course, that I can't actually get into the doctors because the disabled parking is round the back. And the only entrance they have open at the moment because of Covid, you have to go all the way around the outside of the, say, say the parking's here, normally you go in the door there and then you're in reception. But you now have to go all the way around the outside of the building, right the way along, further over here, and in a side door there and then come back to be in reception. And it's just... I just physically can't walk that far. I mean, I had trouble walking that far before. And since through the lockdowns and everything, where I wasn't going out because, you know, I wasn't socialising, because nobody was socialising. So I was only sort of pottering around at home. My mobility has got so much worse, it's ridiculous. Um, which is a real shame. But it means that I can't physically get in there. I'm okay when I go and get my COVID jabs done because when they're doing COVID jabs, they open the disabled doors and you go in there, round to the doctors, get your jab and out the fire exit. And I'm just like, well, if you can do that for the COVID jabs, why can't you do that to let me in so I can actually have the nurse or the doctor look at my legs and, you know, maybe take some swabs and see if there's something else that's stopping it from healing. But... No such luck. Right, I'm changing to my Royal and Landical Sheep Pro Crease Brush. I went to go and order some more of these, and the UK site is currently shut. And they're saying um, we're going to be changing it so that you can order direct from the American sites. So I'm like, right, that's going to increase the postage to us straight away. So I went to the American sites just to see, and at the moment you can't order from them because they don't have the UK as a destination. So I'm just like, do you want us to order brushes from you or not? So annoying. Right, I'm going into one called Sunburn. Do not, ever, ever get sunburn. I have too many friends that have got cancers from sun tanning and burning in the past. If your skin tans, it's because you have damaged it. If you want a tan, get a fake tan. Get a spray tan. Bronze your body up. Do not, do not ever go out without sunscreen on. Even in the depths of winter, I wear sunscreen. Even if I don't do anything else to my face, makeup wise, I cleanse, I moisturise, and I sunscreen. I do that every morning, without fail. Because you can still burn through glass. Hmm. Welcome to my TED talk. Right. Um, and I'm going to sort of. Kind of just you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of fluffing it here, so it's on the outer third of the static lid. But I'm only going to go a little bit along. Just want the outer corner emphasised today. Do you know what? Miss Nona's going to love this look. She loves when I do warm tones like this and oranges. I don't often do... This is what I mean. It's like I was... I was convinced last night that I was going to be doing bluebell colours. I thought, yeah, 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 bluebell and green, that'll be nice. And then I sit down and I start playing with tulip colours instead.
Now with this eye, you can see I've got a super deep creasing just here. When I put pigment on the lid, I do have to break my own rule about not stretching my lid out. Because otherwise what happens is the shimmer pigment just, instead of blending onto the lid, it just sits in the creasing and then ends up sort of falling into my eye during the day and is extremely painful. I mean like extremely, extremely painful. Right, let's grab me a flat brush. This is a Voldemorphy M149. Tiny little brush, but flat. As always, you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. So I've got my Makeup Obsession Fix Fit Extra Hard Makeup Fixing Spray to spritz my brush with once I've applied the pigment to it. Now, you can use any liquid at all. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC, Marie Badescu, Hydrating Mist from e.l.f. Um, you can use a priming spray, fixing spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle, wash it out and just put fresh water in it each day. Just don't ever, ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Okay. Right, I'm going to start off by going into Better Days which is the sort of citrusy yellow like so spritz both sides now this bit of the brush the ferrule is now wet so I'm going to tuck that into my knuckles and spin to dry it off because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening that glue because then you won't have a brush you'll have an expensive stick Right, I'm just going to apply this all across the lid. Well, across the two thirds that I've not got any pigment on yet. Dry that off and clean it off and just run over it with a dry brush just to clear any excess pigment and then repack it. And I'll show you what I do with my left eye to cause as little additional damage as possible. I only pull the lid out far enough to straighten the crease. I don't pull it right out past my lug hole. And I blend this over the creased area as quickly as I can and then gently put the skin back don't just let it ping back and as usually happens I run out of pigment so I've got to pick up a little bit more You can see how much more this lid moves compared to 
this one and that is literally because of the damage that was caused and I'm talking when I was five six years old so we're talking over 42 years ago now this damage was caused right I'm now gonna having dried the brush off go into golden hour just going to apply this dry just where it meets the orange on the edge there and just gently buff it dry the brush off pick up a little bit more Same thing this side. Clean the brush off and I'm going to pick up a little bit of clouded. the brush and just pop that just literally on the inner part of the eye because I didn't want it to be stark white I wanted it to have some base yellow to it is that mm, mm, mm. right I'm going to pause you my lovelies while I go and uh, put some foundation on and whatnot and I'll be back to finish this eye off with you now I've got a little bit of a while before I get to chat to you again but for you darlings it'll be completely instant so I'll see you right now Hey my lovelies, okay I am back as you can see I have used the Mocha Soap Brows and I filled them in with the Sunburn shade which is the deepest shade that I used here. Uh, now I'm going to go into, let me grab my little brush and I'm going to dip very lightly into Midnight. Just gonna pop that just on the outer edge of my lower lash line. This eye has already started watering, which is just wonderful of it. And then using my floofy brush, I am going into God, Skywalker. Which is that sort of lavendery periwinkle blueberry blueberry bluebell colour. I'm gonna use that along my lower line just to give a little bit of a hint of the bluebell There, 
pretty. Right, my lovely ones. I am going to pause you for one. Oh, I haven't done my highlights. Oh, what highlight do I want to use today? It's a very good question. by Petra. This is the Subtle Sunrise. Now this is a cheap lip brush. I'm going to go into this sort of champagne-y side. I'm going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow. Then again on the inner corner and as always I bring mine underneath and just start to blend it in with the colour under the eye. With that done, I will pause you one last time. Um, I'll do mascara, chuck some more of that highlight on my cheeks, do some lippy, do something with the hair. And I'll be back with my finished look and tell you a little bit about the lady that I am collabing with. So I'll see you right now. And I'm back. Okay, so this is my finished look. I use that pixie highlight on my cheeks and the lippy is the Melt Tomboy lippy because I realised I hadn't included the green of the stems and I really like this sort of greyish green I think it also pairs nicely with the brightness what do you think? here's the picture how do you think I've done? do you like? Do you not like? If you were collabing with me on this, which colours would have drawn you from that picture? Now remember, the whole point of the pick collab is that you can only use colours that are in the picture, but you don't have to use all of them. So what would you have been drawn to if you were collabing with me? Which palette or palettes would you have used to create your look? Right, if you are one of my regular viewers, please double check, you are still subscribed, YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but they're leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that that's what's happening. Um, it's also worth double checking your notification status and ensuring that it is still set to all, because mine keep getting put, pushed back to personalise, which means that I get nothing. And that's true not just of me, but for all the channels you follow. So before you press play on the next film you're going to watch, just double check your subscribe button is grey and just double check your notification status is OK. If, however, you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here. Especially if you've come over from Nona's channel. Now... It would be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope YouTube will actually pull their finger out and send you some. But my lovelies who have watched me and who aren't here from Nona's channel, what I'm going to need you to do now is go across to Miss Nona's channel. 
once you've liked and commented and maybe given me a cheeky share. Nona is uh, hashtag my so called life 1977 and she and I have been friends on YouTube now for years. Um, I think we first met through Anya, uh, Pink Sweets, um, and we were in a couple of group collabs together and we just really get on as people, you know, she's, well I mean who couldn't get on with her, she's, she's one of the nicest, kindest people I've had the fortune to meet um, through doing this, this YouTube. She's just... Even, th there are times when I'd do a look and I'd be like, oof, not sure about this. And she'd say, well send it across, let's have a look. And she would always find something positive to say about a look. Um, and that is Nona. She is positivity. She will always find something good to say about the look you've produced. Um, she does a lot of, she used to be very uh, neutrals, but since she's been involved in more collabs, and I like to think since she's been working with me on these pit collabs, she's got so much more confident using brighter colours, and I love seeing that because, you know, one of the reasons that I started this channel was to encourage people to have fun with makeup, and you know, stretch yourself, use more than just your neutrals, have fun. Do more than just put a pop of colour in the inner corner or on your lower, you know, your lower lash line. Makeup's there to have fun with and if you do a look you don't like, take it off and start again. You know, it's, it's not rocket science, it's just colourful pigments. Uh, and she, uh, you know, she's just, as well as, as doing tutorials and reviews, she does unboxings. Um, and she, she makes a lot of things as well. She, she, she got some stuff from the dollar store and made this amazing brush holder that rotates. And I'm just like, this woman is just so skilled she's just so lovely and if you haven't already checked out her channel then you are missing out seriously pop over watch her film do all those good youtubery things of liking and commenting and you know, maybe even sharing hers as well let them know you've come from the 4f family um, and just show her the same love you always show me because she deserves it and she's worth it Right, my lovelies, as well as this particular film, I've got an awful lot of other films you could be checking out. Um, you know, I've got tag films, collab films, challenges, I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So if you fancy watching something else, you know, I've said it for years, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy with a coffee and a custard cream or whatever your choice of nibble may be and just indulge for a bit have some chill out time listen to me blether on about important things and non-important things whilst applying colour pigments to my face all right my lovelies that's it for me all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous? And I will see you next time. Bye for now.